No guidelines, no rules, no. make it happen. And for some of us, that's exciting at first, right? As an entrepreneur, you have to be the graphic designer. You have to be the accountant sometimes. You have yes. to be the- You have to be everything. The jack of all trades. Yes. The there's jack no, of all trades. There's no question. Little known fact, when I was in the second grade, seven years old, I wore suits to school. I promise you, that's my mother. People are going to create their own idea of who you are when you step on the scene, right? Seven seconds for the first impression. Seven seconds. And 55% of the first impression is what you wear. And that's Thank what you. I ask every client of mine. What do you want to be known for? What do you stand for? Stand for, stand for, stand for. Like up, like up. Welcome to Business and Bourbon, where we have real talk with real people. I'm Ron L. Richards, the creator and host of Business and Bourbon. I want to welcome you into the show. March is Women's History Month, and that just means so much for me. I've been privileged and blessed to have so many wonderful, powerful women that have influenced my life, whether that be my beautiful mother, my aunts, my wife, my daughter, and some other really close friends that have become family. I just am so appreciative of how they've not only enriched my life, but made me a better man and a stronger man. So in light of that, I wanted to bring on someone that I felt really exemplified that in the business world. So I invited Morgan Wider onto our show. Morgan has some tremendous experience working with some of the biggest brands in, in retail, quite frankly. And through her company, Wider Style, she helps women to really see that they're all beautiful and to accept themselves for who they are, what they are, and know that they're all beautiful. So Morgan and I sat down and had a really fun conversation and we talked about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, what it's like to be a woman in entrepreneurship and some of those challenges. And also she gave some tremendous advice for women and men in terms of how you should be styling yourself for the professional world. So we had a lot of fun. I want you to go ahead and grab your glass Grab your cup, grab your mug, whatever you like to drink out of. And I want you to pour your favorite beverage in there. Coca-Cola, if you're down here in the South. The little Southern Comfort, maybe. A little Jack Daniels, maybe some tea, kombucha, wine, whatever it is that you like to drink. I want you to pour it in there. Sit down next to us and enjoy a little business and bourbon. Welcome back to business and bourbon. I am here in lovely Atlanta. God, I love living here. It's so beautiful. Uh, at the King and Duke, always, you know, as always, I want to shout those guys out because they host us and serve me delicious drinks and uh, yeah, and some great food. So it's a really good place to hang out. If you're in the city of Atlanta, make sure you come out to King and Duke. You might see me. Today, I am joined by the lovely Morgan Wider. I'm so excited to have her as part of the pod today. Hey, Morgan. Hi. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. Well, um, I'm excited to have you here. Thank you. So as always, we have to start with talking about what it is that we are drinking. Now, before you tell me what you're drinking, mm -hmm. I read your bio, <laughs> I read your show prep doc, and it tells me that you're a Jack Daniels girl. I am. I'm very simple when it comes to my food and my alcohol. Well, it says here you're not fancy, and I beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys could could see what I'm seeing here, she's definitely fancy. When it comes to my clothes, but not for my food and alcohol. Okay. Yes. Right. I like I like simple stuff. What are you drinking? I'm drinking a delicious old fashioned. I just learned about old fashions a couple months ago. What'd you learn? Well, I learned that they existed and that I and, <laughs> and that I like the taste of them. So and then this is a really great one at King and Duke. Done really well because I've had some bad ones before. Yes, and how do you know if they're bad? Well, if they have a ton of fruit in them, yes. that's bad. Or super sugary. Yes, yeah. they don't know what the hell they're doing. Right. And I am drinking, I forget what, what this one is called, but it's delicious. It has some rye whiskey in there and a whole bunch of other good stuff. You know, if you guys listen to the podcast, you know that King and Duke, they kill it when it comes to drinks. So, again, in Atlanta, come through, see me, buy me a drink, it's all good. <laughs> So, again, welcome to the podcast, and um, why don't we start with just telling the audience a little bit about 
you because you're pretty interesting. Thank so, you. What have you been doing? You're an entrepreneur now. I'm what an is, entrepreneur now. Um, the first 10 years of my career were spent in corporate retail. I went to Georgetown as an econ major and thought mm -hmm. I wanted to be a lawyer like my dad. And senior year of college, I was burnt out, didn't want to take an LSAT. And I saw that The Gap was recruiting on campus and said, I like clothes. I like to shop. <laughs> and I want to learn about the business of clothes. So I launched my career of 10 years of being behind the scenes and learning about inventory, pricing, color, garment make, um, all the things that go into your experience when you shop into a store. Yeah. Then I decided there's more to clothes than just being in office. And that's when I went on my own. Well, I think that is really kind of a dream job for a lot of people out there, like working for The Gap or one of those cool brands like that straight out of college. So you decided to become an entrepreneur after 10 years of that. Right. 10 years. Uh, and what the hell were you thinking, my friend? <laughs> I tell everyone I had found a new church and started meditating and I changed in my life. So I tell everyone who wants to like start meditating or get a new practice, be careful because shit might get crazy for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happened for you. I never thought I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was most recently at Carter's here in Buckhead and was on international merchandising, was traveling, was building businesses and I just outgrew it. And, you know, mm. I think the thing about retail and even quote unquote fashion, it's it's sexy and it's cool, but it's still a business. Yes. And there's politics mm -hmm. and there's numbers to be had and there's management and people that necessarily aren't always in alignment with your beliefs. Yeah. And sometimes it's time oh, you to mean go. it's a business. It's absolutely a business. <laughs> it's absolutely a business. People don't think that when they think about getting to work in oh, fashion, yeah. but it's a business. Yeah, you thought you were going to go to The Gap and, and hang out and have a good time. And, and, and The Gap was a great place. Yeah. All of the places I've been are great places. I've learned a lot, but it's still a cubicle. Mm -hmm. Yes, my widget that I deal with are was clothes and shoes and, and color, but you have numbers to be held accountable to. You have managers that you may not love. You have coworkers that may say some slick shit to you on a mm -hmm. Monday. You know, it's, <laughs> it's still a business. <laughs> So, okay, after 10 years, 10 years. of doing that, yes. and um, again, kind of a dream job for a lot of folks, mm -hmm. right? Now, obviously, you know, like I know, right. once, you, once you get into it, those dreams aren't necessarily, they're dreams for a reason. They're right? dreams for a reason. <laughs> but you decided to go into entrepreneurship, and it's now yes. been, what, two, two and, and a half, half years? years? Two and a half years, September and of 2016. You are going into the second quarter, that's uh, what I call that. Is that what this is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yes. that first couple of years, that's your first quarter. It felt like the wilderness, the first couple of years. It's, the first year was the wilderness. Oh, it is. Yes. You're like, well, where am I? What am I doing? What am I doing? How do I do this? Yes. How do I do that? And yeah. unlearning corporate America practices was a big oh. part of the first year. Well, because in corporate America, I mean, largely you're told what to do you have guidelines and you know you have resources and then you get on your own and it's like okay um no guidelines no rules no. make it happen and for some of us that's exciting at first right it's like okay man i can do whatever i want well that's terrifying you can do yes. whatever you want <laughs> right or for me it was my job to be a merchant and a merchant meant that i was kind of the spoke in the wheel so i had a designer i had a planner i had inventory people i had an assistant and every one of those people were the experts and I was kind of the project manager. Okay. So I had to learn how to trust my own gut and be my own expert. Got it. That was a big thing for me when in work in corporate America. Yes, you're told what to do, but sometimes you're also relying on other people's expertise. And as an entrepreneur, you have to be the graphic designer. You have to be the accountant sometimes. You have yes. to be... The, you have to be everything. The jack of all trades. Yes. The there's jack of all trades. There's no question. Um, and I think that it's great for... now. If you listen to the podcast and you watch my videos, you know that I'm not one of these guys that says entrepreneurship's for everyone. I don't believe that at all. But I believe the exercise of entrepreneurship is kind of for everyone. Like, man, what you learn it is the in biggest terms of being person resourceful. Development class. Oh, my yes. God. Yes. Like, um, if you haven't gone through that, you have no idea. But Absolutely. it will make you a better, if you go back to corporate at some point, it will make you a better corporate employee. It will make Absolutely. you a better business professional because you know how to be resourceful. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so let's hop into what you're doing right now because yes. I love what it is that you do. Thank you. And which is a big reason why I wanted you to be part of the podcast. So let's talk about it. What are you doing now? So I am a speaker and a personal style expert. And so some would call that a stylist, which I don't necessarily like that term mm -hmm. because in the city of Atlanta, um, that's often associated with celebrities. 
um, in movies, but it's my job to help people learn how to show up, how they dress, and how their image impacts their income, how their image impacts their professional success. So mm. I uh, speak on that, and I do a lot of corporate workshops on the importance of your wardrobe when it comes to getting promoted, when it comes to sales, when it comes to training and promotions. But then I also help women and men clean up their closets, take them shopping, um, getting them aware of the importance of how they look. Oh, my God. It, so here's the thing. When I first when I started my professional career, it's funny because people will look at me now. They'll look at the videos and they'll say, oh, man, he's he's a laid back, relaxed guy. Anyone that's known me for more than, oh, I don't know, five years knows that I'm Mr. Suited and Booted. Ah. Um, so my that, that's what I learned from my father at a very young age. Little known fact. When I was in the second grade, seven years old, I wore suits to school. I promise you, that's my mother. I wore suits By to choice. school. By choice. Oh, yes. What a business Can man. you imagine that? Yeah. I'm a businessman right here. I really did that. No, You're but going to know, the office. But my father taught me the importance of presentation. That's awesome. Um, and how, you know, and, and, and let's let's just let's just be real. Mm-hmm. Like um, mm-hmm. As I think it's that much more important for you know minorities, ethnic and gender minorities to, to really understand that Absolutely. and take control of that because or, or whoever you are because the reality is is that people are going to create their own idea of who you are when you step on the scene. Right? Seven seconds for the first impression. Seven seconds. And fifty five percent of the first impression is what you wear. So what I was taught is you take control of that. Absolutely. That's what I teach. I love it. Yes. 45% we can't control our race, our gender, our age. Mm-hmm. But 55% comes from purely on what we're wearing. Ain't that crazy? Yes. Yes. But you know what's funny? I was the exact opposite as you. Even in corporate America, I was super casual. Were My you? mother was super fancy and I would go shopping with her, but I didn't like the attention. And I always was like the tomboy. So I dressed very, very plain or always in corporate America, jeans. I was in casual environments. So, so let's talk about that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the transformation here's, for here's me. the thing. Like, okay, Gen X guy here, right? And I was taught, just like most generations, I think, hey, you know, you get into the corporate world and it's, you know, it's suited and booted mm-hmm. and there's a, a certain attire that's professional. And then I think what happened in the, you know, probably the late 90s, early 2000s, this kind of casual thing kind of... Business casual came Yeah, kind of took over. And so... I think that there's a lot of people out there that would that would kind of debate this, um, and I've kind of debated it a little bit where they're like, well, you know, I just just to be comfortable, and you know, and and that's not the way it is anymore. That's old school. Like the new school is, we can come and we wear flip flops and socks, right. and and here's and tell me if you agree with me. You can, you can do that. You can wear flip flip flops, socks, whatever the hell you want, but understand that. There's an opportunity if you take it to the next level and you control that perception by yes. um, making sure that your wardrobe is in check and making and, and, and creating that. And, and it's not I don't want people to think this is being fake or anything, but, you know, it's all about what do you want to be known for? And that's what I ask every client of mine. What do you want to be known for? What do you stand for? Ooh, and make your wardrobe match. So if. Um, I had a boss when I was interviewing in New York for a job, again, at a corporate retailer who interviewed me in flip-flops, a t-shirt, and cut-off jeans. Yes. It was 100 degrees in New York that day. I'll never forget that. And that was her vibe. She was laid back, and that was her aesthetic. I interviewed in a blazer, but jeans, but that's what she wanted to be known for. And she owned that. I think nowadays, um, as a corporate person, you absolutely have control of how you want to be known but there's also that element of always being prepared. Yes. So you never know who you want to, who you might run into. Mm-hmm. I often say in my presentations, dress for you, not for your day. You, mm-hmm. Just because you don't have a meeting on your calendar doesn't mean that you can't run into the CEO in the elevator. There we go. And that's Ooh, happened to me. That. That's happened to me. I think that we've got influencers out there. Um, like a lot of people love Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. like, okay, man, he's got his K-Swiss and all sort of thing. He just, it's all about the quality of the individual. Forget how I look. It's about what I'm bringing to the table. People, understand. (laughs) Understand. Like, you have to present well before people will give you the opportunity to even show how great you are. And you also have to know your audience. Mm -hmm. You have to know your audience. So that's that's often, again, if that's part of Gary's brand and that works for him now. But what was he doing five years ago? What was he doing when he first started? It's something Mark Zuckerberg 
he wore dad jeans before they were in style and cross trainers <laughs> and a t-shirt and now he's 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 upped his game he's upped his polish and dad jeans are in style now for for women oh i hate them oh, the so mom bad. jeans too the mom jeans oh, are in I hate style them. now for, i don't get for it. a certain demographic when you're like stick thin and you can pull okay. that off but like for most people i don't put very few clients can pull off a mom jean okay yes you have to look intentional with everything all right so can i get some style advice Sure. First of all, you've you've observed my style. Okay. Yes. Okay. How am mm-hmm. I doing? Am I doing all right? First of all, am I am I okay? I'm on your podcast. Of course, I'm going to tell you. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm killing it. Yes. I'm killing the game. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's get some free advice to okay. the folks out there. Like let's just just some basic stuff. Absolutely. As, let's say you're that young professional. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to use a couple examples. Let's say you're that young professional and you work whatever. You know, corporate gig. Corporate um, gig, okay. What should they be concerned about? How should they be dressing? What do, what do you think? It's a great question. I think it is always, again, about being prepared. So it's, for me, if you're a young professional, I had dressed to be prepared, not to always be fashionable. Yes. So there's some, I had an assistant. Um, I love that. My you, form, should, you should trademark that. I, I should. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I had an assistant, gorgeous, tall, leggy. She's 24 and she had this really cute short, short dress on. Mm -hmm. She looked good in it. She could pull it off, but it wasn't appropriate for the environment. And so it's always about being appropriate. And I'm not saying wear a suit. If you can wear jeans to work, great, but wear them intentionally. Wear them with a great blouse. Wear them with a blazer. If you're a guy, wear a fun button down shirt. Don't live in the t-shirts all the time. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, really be prepared. I oftentimes hear, well, I'll keep a blazer in my, um, on the back of my chair or I'll keep a pair of black pumps at my desk. You can meet your opportunity in the elevator. If you don't have your black pumps I love it. or if yeah. you don't have your blazer and everyone knows that that's your like stand in blazer. So you're not fooling anyone. Mm-hmm. Be prepared and be on brand. I love it. Yes. I think that's great advice. So um, let's say that you're that mid-career person. Okay. Um, how should mir- I mean you're you're not you're not in your twenties anymore, nope. right? No. Nope. So you've been out there um, 15, 20 years, whatever, and you're reinventing yourself now. Mid-career like, what, is about thing? investing. Okay. It's a really and you should do that in every age, but mid-career you should have some of the flexible income to invest in the things that you're going to wear every day. So. I hate to say this, but for most women at mid-career, you've outgrown Forever 21. <laughs> you know, it's it's true. And for men, it's also you've outgrown Forever 21. It's what? about It's <laughs> about investing in really great staples and whatever your staples are. So, like, for me, leather blazers are my blazers, so I invest there. Um, it's about wearing great shoes at every age, but especially mid-career, wearing great shoes. I don't think Louboutins or anything fancy, but your shoes. My mother used to tell me about a man. A man. You can tell a man. Tell everything about a man by the shoes that he's wearing. Yeah. And you believe same, that? Is yes. that true? It's the same okay. for women. It's the same for women. So invest in those like really good staples. Get rid of your dusty shoes. Get rid of your dusty shoes. So many women are walking around in busted <laughs> shoes and I'm like, what <laughs> is going on? That's the first thing that we see oftentimes. Yes. Yes. So that is absolutely invest in your staples. So tell me if you agree with this. And this is something that, uh, man, I've just had some really cool people that have been um, a part of my professional career my professional and my life just to to help give me some guidance along the way and shout out to Scott Ashby when I was a very young um, sales leader Mm -hmm. he taught me the importance of quality Mm -hmm. in my wardrobe so instead of going out there and buying multiple pieces that were um, you know inexpensive you go out there and you buy a quality piece Mm -hmm. And um, that pe- it looks well, yep. it, it, it lays well, and it lasts longer. Like, listen, I've got some shoes, and I'm dating myself. This is crazy now that I think about it. i got some shoes that are older than my kids. <laughs> but Be careful with that, though, because some really? shoes, shoes I tell people, especially for women, maybe not as much for men, uh-huh. shoes go out of trend faster than a lot of clothes do. So you can so sometimes a classic Oxford. Like for I've men, got, you guys are okay. There you go. You're so, okay. So it's right. it's just a matter of resoling it. Yes. So. Exactly. There's a great shoe guy around the corner from here. Is it really? Yes. Um, but quality is so important, and quality is also relative. So 
Like, there's some things that you should spend money on. Like, for a guy, a really great navy blazer is something that you should always invest in Love because it. you can wear that everywhere. Yeah. Sometimes suits, if you, especially if you're wearing them every day, you maybe want more options than quality. Get them tailored. So, it's like, get a great deal at Dillard's on a suit and then spend some money on tailoring. Oh, always tailor. Always, always, always tailor, tailor, but really spend money on tailoring. I tell that for women, too, because our bodies can be hard to fit no matter your shape. So, finding a good tailor is something. One thing I also want to talk about when we talk about different types of categories of people if you're an entrepreneur you should be wearing color you should be doing something that stands out as an entrepreneur even in corporate america but really when you're in a business when you're selling yourself and you're selling your business wear items that make you stand out because they are literally conversation starters i love it and yes it's funny that you say that because you attended one of our business and bourbon events last year mm -hmm. and i remember saying man she looks so classy and i hadn't Thanks. met you at that point no and, um, right yeah so mission accomplished thank you you are always <laughs> an entrepreneur you are always on that's true you are always wow. always on and what great advice you are always you never know where your next sales or opportunity can come from and i think that you know we we know that as a as an entrepreneur that you know, we work a lot of hours, mm -hmm. and I think that sometimes that allows us to be a little lazy. Absolutely. We're lazy in, in, on our... Um, or just tired. You yeah. Know? Just tired. Just or, tired. Okay, you say tired, I say lazy. You know, we mm -hmm. want to wear t-shirts and... <laughs> And sweatpants yep, right. all the time, mm -hmm. right? And, and without realizing, hey, look, you are constantly promoting your business. You are your business. Absolutely. You are your As business. As the shirts that, what do my shirts say? I am a business, That's man. That's right. There yes, we go. Exactly. <laughs> so, yes, yes, absolutely. And I love that. Um, I, I want to segue real quick. Okay. So, one of the things that I love about what you do and, and what I've I've admired from afar is I'm a dad, mm -hmm. right? I've got a 15 year old daughter and I love her dearly. And I am very, very much concerned about her being a strong, empowered woman. That mm -hmm. means a lot to me. I know that as a, as a dad, the most important relationship that a woman has is with her father. So right. like I try to make sure that I'm doing everything that I need to do to help her to, to be the best, strongest woman that she can be. Now I see that you do a lot as it relates to empowerment of women in their clothing, how they view body image, all Absolutely. those sorts of things. Let's talk about it. That's a lot. Uh, Isn't it? That's a whole lot. I think the first thing I often say for moms, especially who have daughters, is be aware of how you talk about your body and how you dress and how you think about your image because your daughter is watching you. Yes. So if you don't invest in your image or if your husband or if your father doesn't value his wife's appearance, your daughter subconsciously is picking up on my appearance doesn't matter. Or I'm not worthy to be seen. So oftentimes I challenge women that like what you say about your body and what you do for yourself, whether it's put everyone else first and not shop for yourself or not care about your image. You're teaching your daughters that it's not important for them. Yeah. And they're teaching your sons that they come before a woman. So why, why is that so important to you? Because how we dress ourselves tells people how to treat us. Mm -hmm. By investing in our image, we tell people, you have to invest in me. I'm not here on any bullshit. And you can't pull any bullshit on me when you're dressing appropriately. So I, when I see young... Does this, this have to do with your personal journey? Or I mean, like... It's so, let's a little talk. bit in some ways. Um, but more <laughs> so now seeing, like, the, the trend of the Instagram models and, the, <laughs> and, the, and, and working with teenage girls on, on wearing less clothing. Mm -hmm. It's really about knowing your worth and still having fun with fashion. But it's a matter of fact that how you dress determines how people treat you. And that's just the end of the game. You know, we can, there's, there's all these things where we put ownership on men about how we treat women, but also how we treat ourselves and how we show up is so important. I so agree. important. That's what I'm so passionate about. And I also am passionate about helping women and young girls love their bodies as they are. There we go. Yeah. So as after there working in corporate that's retail, what I'm talk about. after working in corporate retail, it was my job to help determine what a size six meant, which then meant what a size 10 meant, which then meant what a size 14 meant. A size six at Old Navy was the figment of my imagination. It was based <laughs> off of our ideal client who was imaginary. Mm -hmm. And then we sized everything up or down based on that, what we thought about that client. Yeah. So if you go to Old Navy size six and a Banana Republic size six, they're in the same building. I, I used to work there. They will fit differently because our target customer was different. Really? Absolutely. So size is bullshit. 
They're manipulating us. They're so. manipulating us. They're absolutely manipulating us. And it, it's, it, it size doesn't define you. How your clothes fit and how they look on you, people see. They don't see the number in the garment. Mm -hmm. They don't. I love that. Um, you know, again, as a dad, it's always been important to me that my daughter love herself. Mm -hmm. And, um, and body image is so, so important. And it's become more important, not just with women, with men with as men well. With men too, absolutely. Um, but we know that because of the, you know, all of the, the, the strains and stresses of society, that with, I don't want to make it seem like, yes, it's important with men, but men, women are under so much more absolutely. pressure as it relates to body image and being comfortable with who they are. And, and, and I saw, it's funny, I saw something the other day. I was watching... Uh, <laughs> Two dope queens. Oh, I love them. <laughs> so watch them on HBO, and they had this artist on. What is her name? Lily? Lily? I'm behind. Uh, I'm going to have to figure it out. But you know, she was a bigger girl, right? Okay. But she is healthy, and she pointed that out. She's like, "Look, my cholesterol is great, my blood pressure is great." And she was so comfortable mm -hmm. with who she was. Beautiful. And I'm like, man, that's so empowering. Like, you know, we come in all different shapes and sizes. And uh, unfortunately, we live in a world that we're, we're, we're bombarded with imagery and um, that perpetrates something that's unrealistic. Absolutely. Just like business. Again, hashtag entrepreneur porn. Right. Y'all know what I'm talking right. about, yes. where people are presenting this entrepreneurship like it's all roses and, mm -hmm. and, and vacations and, 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 and Bentleys. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. It's so funny because as a guy that has been in in entrepreneurship for nearly 20 years, I'll see, I'll scroll through my Instagram. We know how we do. Mm -hmm. And I'll see some 24 year old kid that's sitting in front of a car in front of a house that's worth less than the car. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> and he's all, oh, yeah, baller style, this and that. Like, listen, entrepreneur porn, just like with women and body mm -hmm. image, like mm -hmm. we, we I, people, we need to wake up. We need Absolutely. to understand that that shit is not real it's not at all it's not at all nor is that an excuse to opt out yes so if you are plus or if you are anything other than a size zero or size two that does not give you the excuse to not care about your image oh thank you so I that's like that too that is something that i have talked a lot like of plus size women and my plus size clients or your health yes or your health and the retail industry is finally catching up slowly to make more options available for people mm -hmm. but just how you have to invest in your leadership skills your business you have to invest in your image no matter your size and there's options for you Absolutely options. So you have to do the work and you have to tell the world and yourself that you are worthy of it, no matter your size, no matter your shape, no matter your weight. I love it. Yes. I think that's great advice. Thank you. So as someone that's in their second quarter, mm -hmm. um, and that's my own term, all right? I'm, I'm trademarking that. Um, you, their second quarter of entrepreneurship, you've learned a lot. I have. So um, let's, let's, it's time to share. Let's okay. share with the audience. So um, I asked you a few questions. Right. One of those questions I asked was, what advice would you give yourself, you know, if, we, if you were to go back? And the one that stood out to me the most was you said something about the most vocal, not mm. always the most talented wins. Yeah. What did you mean by that? I think in my industry as a stylist, quote unquote, there are folks who are doing it on Instagram and they are um, in social media who are posting pictures and living that entrepreneurship or what we call stylist porn um and i'm thinking over here like yo that shit is so cheap it's like polyester <laughs> um but they're doing it and they're vocal and they're yes. putting it on social media and that's something that i have to get better about yes um or even so let's be clear mm -hmm. there's not there's no hate in that at no. all game respects game exactly exactly it is literally just because you are talented being the best kept secret doesn't do you any good. There we go. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it resonated so much with me because there are a lot of people out there that are, you know, entrepreneurs or business professionals, and we know we're great. We're great at what we do. And um, it's, it's funny, and it really resonated with me because I spoke with another gentleman a few weeks ago in the car industry. Excellent at what he does. Well known. I mean, like globally. He told me. <laughs> I don't know because I'm not in that industry, but he told me. But, you know, I said to him, that's fantastic. That's awesome. But I don't know you. Right. <laughs> right. That's what I told him. I don't know you. Right. So, you know, if you're not understanding the importance of 
being loud, as mm-hmm. you put it, or, mm-hmm. or and, and getting and having that voice, promoting yourself, mm-hmm. understanding the tech that's out there. Shame on us all. Mm-hmm. Like shame on and you. And I'm I had to go through that journey. Like when mm-hmm. I first launched my business, I was I had a different name, a different business name because I was very adamant that the business was going to be something outside of myself. Mm. And I and it, I <laughs> right. And I finally I relaunched my business with yeah. a new name with my last name last year, Wider Style. Yes. And I had to get comfortable being in the spotlight. Yeah, it's difficult, it's isn't difficult. it? It's difficult. It's very difficult and it's something that you have to go through. Now that says a lot about you what as does it an say? individual. Because here's the thing. I I struggled with that same thing mm-hmm. for fifteen years. Okay? Um, and I don't it's just because I was raised to be humble, yep. right? And, and I was player. raised to and yep. so I so it's I did an interview probably, I don't know, five or six years ago with a, a local magazine and that magazine they had asked me they were asking me normal questions that you ask an entrepreneur and right. and what she had written in the magazine, I was so surprised she said, Ronnell always talks about we, the team, this and that because that's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. my nature. Right. right. So it's so difficult for me to to step out like there mm-hmm. right? and don't Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm a very confident guy. You guys know right, that, right? right? But, but I'm also a humble guy and a guy that really wants the team to 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 shine as well. So, I struggled with that mm-hmm. as well and figuring, hey, look, I am I'm the business. I'm the guy. I have to put myself out there. Yep. I have to to. It's not about the logo. And this is something I, I just mentioned that gentleman that I I was talking to about um, the cars, the car guy, mm-hmm. and one of the things he had said to me as well. He's like. You know, he showed me his card and he said, see that logo there? I want that logo to mean something. And I told him, I said, the logo doesn't mean shit. Because people do business with people. Yes. People it's, do it's business with people. It's about you. It's about you. You're the business. It took mm-hmm. me a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And trust, and, and hey, I was successful through that period of time. But let me tell you something. The business that made me very successful, we closed the, the doors of that business, mm-hmm. you know, because they businesses have shelf life. Yep. But guess what? I'm still here. I'm still here. And I'm still the business. Yep. Just like you. Yep. Right? Yep, yep exactly. I love it. Okay. So um, before we close, I want you to share with the audience what's next. What's next for, for you? you you've what's kind next of finished your for me second quarter. Is, what's next for um, you? I love speaking. Like that, I fell into a TEDx. It, it, it happened by chance, and a woman I was sitting next to saw potential in me and that's how that happened pause that chance it literally sitting next to me on my left at a at a at a meeting at a networking event no and i don't believe in chance you know that it was Morgan. right i don't, it I don't was, believe it was in absolutely chance. You, it was you were there i was there it was you god the ordained action. it was god no ordained. no 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 <laughs> you made the action you showed up i showed up okay i absolutely showed up all right i showed so up there, and connected. there was action that you took very true that made that very, happen. very true very don't, true don't let's not sell that short thank you okay. um so speaking for me is what i'm so passionate about and from a perspective of going into companies and organizations to really help men and women understand you know style is usually this frivolous topic that we don't talk about but it can make or break a career i agree you know what they are saying about you when you're not getting promoted or oh she's just not the right fit or oh he doesn't get our culture that's that can that can impact your income. That can Dirty little your secret, people. Mm. The people that you're looking at that you admire, Fortune 500 CEOs. Guess what they have? Stylists. Thank you. <laughs> they got Morgans. They do. They do. And they you can do. too. So get it. Yes, do it. They like, understand the importance of their image and there's colors behind it and how your suits fit. If you're even politics, I love watching like the political campaigns because how oh you, my God. what yeah. you wear, how people resonate with you, all of your image is so important. So that's what's next for me is speaking, speaking, speaking. I love that. Yes. And if you are someone that thinks that you're above this, <laughs> like, oh, you know what? That you used know to what? be I'm me. Purple. That used was to be it? me. No, yes. No one is above. Listen, no. no one is above this, yes. period. If you, <laughs> you just made mention of, of presidential campaigns and how that's down to a science mm-hmm. in terms of how they present, right? Absolutely. What makes us think that we're <laughs> we're right. on any different level? Exactly. Are you kidding me? Like, exactly. And it's and there's help out there. You know, I of course I would love to work with everyone and all that I could, but there's help out there um, to really be conscious of what you're wearing. I always thought that I was too smart to think about my image, but if they don't, if 
they don't see me as competent, they're not going to listen to anything that I have to say. I love it. They yeah. can't hear your message if you look a mess. So, Morgan, where do people find you? They can find me on my website, which is widerstyle.com, like longer, bigger, and wider, W-I-D-E-R, or on Instagram, Morgan Wider Style, or on LinkedIn at Morgan Wider. And she's always posting dope videos. She's doing all types of stuff. Thank I'm, you. I'm, I'm trying like, to be like you. I'm, I'm, trying to be like, <laughs> I'm trying to be like you. I'm jealous. I'm like, yo, she's doing all this cool stuff and flying all over the place. <laughs> All over the place. I want to be like you when I grow up. Thank you. So I want to thank you so much for this coming. So on much the pod. fun. Thank you for this opportunity. And I'm glad you had a good time. Had a couple. You had a couple good drinks. I too. did. This is a great old fashioned at King and Duke. Yes. Come get it. All right, guys. You know how we do when we close it out. We out. Thank you for listening to the Business and Bourbon podcast. Please subscribe. And if you like us, give us a five star rating. If you don't, uh, have another drink. Maybe you'll feel a little bit differently. If you'd like to check out our videos, you can go to businessandbourbon.tv. That's businessandbourbon.tv. In addition to that, we're currently touring the United States with our Business and Bourbon Live show. It's a fantastic show where we do a whiskey education and we do some Q&A and it's a great networking event as well. So if you'd like to attend one of our Business and Bourbon Live events, you can go to businessandbourbon.live. Again, that's businessandbourbon.live. Thanks again for listening. 